We ready to do this. We ready, we ready. We was born ready. Born ready. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, welcome back to your Bedroom Super Producer podcast, where myself, JT, and my co-host, BK to the K, always try to find the best information for you, bedroom producers out there, to, you know, reach your goals, live the dream, and enjoy this music lifestyle. Today, we have a special episode directly in line with this as we will try to explore a framework for you guys out there to use in order to climb what we call the mountain of music production. I would say that learning music is already a huge challenge, but when you add the aspect of technology and everything that revolves around computers and uh, studio gear, it can become even a bigger challenge. So today we want to help you guys out, give you kind of a strategy, and we will discuss a, bu a bunch of different aspects and what we've learned uh, along the years so that you can fast track your, uh, your trajectory to success. Isn't that right, BK? Yes, yes. I think it's, uh, I think it's important to just get all the basic points down just uh, where people should start from because like you said it's very daunting when you start to think about all the aspect be it sound design be it what dot to get what software the shortcuts and everything so i think we're just gonna give uh, people like the the like key pointers to stay focused and be able to attain their their goals And also have a sense of progress because sometimes we get overwhelmed and sometimes we lose motivation because we, we uh, you know, get into roadblocks and we kind of sometimes forget where we want to go even with this music endeavor. So um, let's get right into it, shall we? And um, it's going to be a seven item framework that we have for you guys today by the way if uh any of this resonates we also have a video on that topic on youtube titled the same or almost the same how to climb the mountain of uh, music production so you might as well uh, look for that video online but uh, without further ado point number one is to find your why And this is a big, very big topic in the, the, like the self-development world, but we feel that in music production, it's also very crucial because as I've said, when you get, or when the motivation is not always there, it's always important to kind of have this uh, point that never moves uh, and that you can always go back to, to, to remember why you started on this journey. Right, BK? Uh, well, exactly. I think um, when you start on a journey, be it music or anything else, uh, you have to know exactly, like you said, why you're doing it. And the why is intimately linked to um, like finding your niche, finding uh, like your purpose in music. So you're going to have to find out first, uh, do you want to be a composer? Do you want to be a beat maker? Do you want to be a producer? And then, and then you have to link that to, let's say, success. What does success mean? When we say find out your 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 why, that's the thing. Uh, does success for you mean uh, making a lot of money from your music, or does it mean to be famous uh, from your music? If for you it's making a lot of money and you're making music and it's not making you a lot of money, well, you're going to be frustrated and you're going to be feeling like you're not attaining your goal. So that's what we mean by like knowing your why. First of all describing with precision what you want to be, be it an, an engineer, be it a beat maker, be it a producer. And then like, say, what do you want to do? Like for, for me, for example, what I want to do is ultimately I want to make like the best music uh, that I can, uh, the music that I can personally be passionate about that I, that I'm proud of. So Well, I think that's a very good approach uh, to, to really, as you do, compose music, to, be, to stay excited about what you can create. Uh, I myself 
ha have wanted forever to, to live off of selling music. And so for many years, uh, I added this, uh, I would say, list of items I needed to, to control and master uh, on top of being a good musician, stuff like, you know, understanding marketing, how to network, how to find outlets to sell my music. And so there was a bunch of different tasks that I had to focus on. And ultimately, as you've said, it's, it, it really boils down to the money or the glory. And uh, for me, I, I chose the money because I felt that if I could earn money from my passion, I would have a sense of freedom. And, and when I really analyzed like my feelings towards my, my music journey, I, I wanted to, to really be in control of my time and uh, hopefully spend my time on what I love doing the most, which was music. So right now, it's been seven years I've been living off of uh, my beat sales online, and I, I get the sense that I've forgotten somehow uh, that when I started to make music, it was really just about, you know, diving deep into the world of sounds and not really caring about, you know, my chores or, you know, how much time I, I, I had in a day. I just wanted to forget everything and just hear cool sounds. So I'm trying to get back to that to answer your question. I think it has to be a, like a mix of both. If you want to do it uh, as a career, um, you have to be able to develop some sort of routine to address all those points that you, you mentioned if you're living off of it, be it uh, marketing, uh, be it sound design, be it like all these other steps that uh, at first we don't think is included in making music. But you also have to make time like for yourself to, uh, to not just make music as, like, as a... Uh, as a as a money making enterprise, but also just to make music for the the fun of it, the the, the way we used to do it uh, when we started. It needs to be like back on a, like a, a purest level where you're just you're doing it because you enjoy doing it, not just because it's earning you a paycheck. Absolutely, well said. And uh, just to to close on this first topic, I I would say that um, if we want to be precise. I, uh, you know, there, there's a certain type of music that I produce for uh, the stock music libraries I worked, I work with, and uh, lately I, I went back to orchestration, like orchestral music, as a way to just have an outlet to uh, for my creativity, where I wouldn't have any kind of goal. You know, I'm I'm really um, not so far along this journey of learning orchestration, and so it's not like I have a very specific goal in mind. I'm just, you know, tinkering with strings, horns, arrangements, going from composition to orchestration to mixing. And so it's really a more of a learning process where I'm kind of going, going back to school. So that kind of feel refreshing right now. And that's how I get to spend maybe two, three hours at, uh, in the evening, uh, not, you know, pardon my French, but f just fucking around on the computer and trying to, you know, go back to my roots where I was just, you know, playing something on the keyboard, not really caring if it would sell or anything like that. So let's move on to topic number two. Once you've found your why and uh, you know deep down that music is your passion and that you're willing to make the sacrifices, spend the time. Um, I think that, like you've said, BK, that's when you determine a goal or several goals. Like, for example, do I want to, you know, make money, like you've said, or maybe I want to go in a certain line of business, such as becoming a film composer, for example, or producing for singers and songwriters. So how do you approach determining your goals? What's your process, BK? It's not always something that's uh, that's very easy to do because in music, usually if you're passionate about music in general, you're you're gonna you're gonna like different genres, you're gonna like different artists and everything, and that sometimes can get a bit confusing when you're trying to 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 move forward in your music career. I think I think it's a question of just focusing on one thing at a time, um, uh, and then and then not being afraid to always like. Um, like iterate in the future if your goals are going to be changing it's 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 not necessarily a bad thing like you said let's say you started off your goal was to be a beat maker and uh, you organized everything around the fact that you were a beat maker let's say you started on an mpc or a machine or something 
and uh, you wanted to make beats for your friends that were rappers. <clears throat> it's it's not necessarily a bad thing as you evolve that, uh, let's say afterwards, or you, your goals are going to change a little bit. You're going to be maybe wanting to be more of a producer and you're going to start to undertake more than just producing the music. You're going to start uh, directing artists and maybe thinking about orchestration and everything. So I think it's a, as a basis, I think it's, it's good to have a certain goal to be able to develop a routine to attain that specific goal. But what I would give as advice would be your goal is going to evolve as, as your music career advances. And it's not necessarily a failure if it becomes something else. If uh, from a beat maker, you want to become a producer or even if from a producer you want to become something more of a composer and start arranging for like orchestral ensembles like uh, like you're doing. So I think that's pretty much my process. I establish something at first, um, use the tools to, to get better at it. And then if it changes, it changes and you, you reevaluate and you find the, the new ways to, to get to that new goal. That's, that's great advice. I would add to that, um, to, to kind of be self-aware, know where uh, you reside in the process. If you're starting from scratch, let's say you, you, you just bought a computer and uh, you maybe have like a, a demo copy of a DAW, something like Ableton or, or Fruity Loops, then your goal should be to learn uh, those tools, you know? Uh, and then it would be twofold. You would have the technical aspect, so learning the DAW, the plugins, and learning some music theory and understanding rhythm, these kinds of things. Once once you know that, maybe your 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 goal could be to either uh, start selling your music or just keep on improving and maybe learning new new genres, as you said. You know. Uh, very, very uh, difficult genres to master, you know, such as bass music, dubstep, these kinds of things will require you uh, from you to, to learn sound design, for example. So at some point you might have to just focus on sign, sound design and not so much ne necessarily the mixing or the mastering or even the composition aspect of things. So it's always good, I would say, to sum that up, uh, to compartmentalize your learning and your practicing of uh, these new skills that you're trying to master. So uh, point number three is uh, a point that we've already talked about uh, in a prior episode where we uh, gave you guys some tips on uh, what to look out for when buying a computer. Because in this day and age, in the, the, the age of computer music and electronic music, the the computer is pretty much everything. If, if uh, you have a great computer, your w workflow will, will benefit from it. And uh, ultimately, everything speeds up and it, it becomes very much easier to, to tackle your goals. Um, but um, I would say that once you've determined your why and your goals, it would be to get a basic setup. So what would be a basic setup in your mind, BK, in terms of uh, computer music? Well, like you said... Um we would refer to the audience uh, to uh, our prior episode, the podcast we talked about, uh, like a basic uh, PC or Mac laptop that we, uh, we've we uh, suggested for people to get if they're beginners in terms of budget and everything. But if we can like put everything together in a, in a couple of quick phrases. Um, so basically you need a laptop, depending on your budget. If you're on the lower end of the budget, you're going to go for a PC laptop. If you have a little bit more money, you're going to be going for a Mac. In terms of performance and everything, um, if you're a beginner, today's laptop are pretty much, um, they're already race cars if you compare it to stuff that was happening 10 to 15 years ago. So you can't really go wrong with anything. You can always update later. Uh, number two, a good sound card. Today, a beginner good sound card, you can get something for $100, uh, $150, and it's going to be perfectly fine for, for starting out. Um, a MIDI controller, a small MIDI controller, also very cheap today. Uh, you get good stuff from Novation or uh, M -Audio. M Audio or stuff like that. Or even uh, the new uh, Native Instruments one is really, exactly, really if looking you, good. Exactly. Uh, and then for me, a good pair of headphones. I think at the beginning, you don't even need speakers. 
uh, you can just you can just uh, work it out in your bedroom um, with good headphones, and uh, your parents are going to thank you for it. Um, <laughs> and then the last thing, uh, like you said, a, a good DAW. Uh, for me, the easy choice is Ableton, or if you're on Mac, uh, just get a copy of Logic. Uh, they're pretty cheap, pretty cheap options. I think uh, for starting out, that's a a good a good basic setup. Yeah, and a, and a big strength of these two DAWs is the fact that they'll come with a bunch of software synthesizers and even sound banks because the problem is once you've got the computer, once you've got a DAW, the idea is to have sounds to, to produce around. Yeah, exactly. So these two options are really, really good for that, yeah. especially Logic. Going for $200, obviously you need a, a MacBook uh, to, to, to operate the Logic, but... For two hundred dollars, the wealth of sounds that you get is just—I don't think there's a, any offer on the market that competes with that. I would only add a little caveat to what you said about a sound card, because I've been asked several times on the YouTube channel, like, uh, what kind of sound card, or should I get? I, I should get a sound card really quickly uh, in creating my home studio. But I would say, if you're not recording vocals or, or uh, you know, musicians. It's not absolutely necessary. Would you agree with me, uh, BK, on that? For me, the fact that you can get a a normal, like, basic sound card for, like, around $150, uh, it shouldn't be something that, that that's stopping you. Of course, um, you can start with the internal sound card of your of your computer like you said if you're not recur recording any external sources it's it's not necessarily a a must but i've always said even not if you're not if you're not recording anything it's also um how your sounds gets out of the computer so let's say you're gonna go let's say in a studio or you're gonna go play it like a dj set or something the sound card plays a role when you you're you're playing back the sound so it's not just for recording so and for me in my book i would probably invest that 100 dollars uh, in a in a cheap sound card but 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 you're right if you're not recording uh, outside sources you can start out without it for uh, uh, the the first couple of months so it kind of goes back to our point of being self-aware and knowing where you are in, uh, in on your journey so if you're still trying to master the DW and learning how to program drums and, and put together chord progressions and maybe find interesting melodies. Maybe you don't just need this uh, possibility of getting your sounds out of your system and out on maybe a bigger Pro Tool system if you're on a, in a recording session or something like that. Uh, maybe So basically, you need to know your goal. If you, if you want to be able to produce for artists and maybe go in the studio and track out the beats live in the studio with them and with an engineer, for example, you will indeed need a sound card. So again, you need to know if you're ready for that just yet. But you're absolutely right. Um, a sound card is not going to make you learn faster. And you don't you don't need a sound card to, to learn your, your DAW, uh, to learn how to uh, how to edit sound or how to choose the right sounds or to learn music th theory. So you're right that it's not, you can do other things in your uh, musical journey, even if you don't have a sound card at first. Point number four, once you've got uh, kind of this, this strong foundation, you've uh, kind of have this, had this self-exam of what you wanted to achieve with music in your life, and you even have a goal to kind of push this passion forward in a, in a clear direction that helps you uh, to know what kind of information you need to gather in order to, to reach your goal, uh, whether it be, you know, like I said, music theory or maybe understanding how a sound card works and the recording process or even the, you know, the creating stems and tracking beats out for uh, mixing. Uh, you you will want to learn and have kind of a, a like a it's going to become like a to do list or even a calendar of things that you will need to uh, focus on during your week because 
let's not uh, kid ourselves here. Learning music and mastering music is not like a, it, it can't be just a little hobby that you'll, you'll work on in the, during the weekends. You kind of have to uh, make more time uh, during the week for that. Would you agree? Uh, totally. Um, I think once you get into that, that Pandora's box of music making, you realize that there's there's so many aspects and so many facets that you need to 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 get better at that you absolutely have to make uh, the learning aspect one of your priority. Like you said earlier, the two the two fundamentals that you're going to be going at is you're going to have the music theory side and you're going to have the DAW technical side, pretty much. And maybe even the playing styles for for people who exactly learn or or even master an instrument such as yourself, for example, you will make time for for playing bass and guitars during your 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 week. Exactly. So that's a, even another thing. So so yes, you're gonna have to be able to to put aside sometimes almost every day. Every day a little bit is better than uh, trying to do eight hours on a Saturday. You're gonna learn better if you do one hour every day. Yep. So. That's also kind of has to be part of your goals to make time for that practice, to make time for that learning. And it's never going to stop. People think that at, after a couple of years that you've learned all the skills and uh, now you're, you're good and now you're just making music and you're not learning anymore. That's, that's the wrong way of looking at things. And usually you keep learning and you keep learning and there's always something new and there's always something that you can that you can play better. There's always uh, a new inspiration that you're gonna try to to imitate or to see what type of style, type of a jazz style or a, a Timberland or a, a Prince song that you like that you want to understand the the chorus progression. So learning is a is something that's gonna stay with you all the time, and I think it's part of a successful musical journey to understand the fact that you're going to be learning for the rest of your life. And there's always going to be a song that you don't know. There's always going to be a technique that you don't know. And as, as far as for me, even outside of music, I think life is about learning and to keep on learning as much as you can. So if we wanted to, to turn this into actionable items, I would say learn your DAW on a specific day. You know, learn the keyboard shortcuts uh learn all of the different windows you know the arrange window the the piano roll learning how to really effectively and and in a fast fashion ed editing midi information for example then learning how to record sounds in your daw stuff like that and then learning mixing and that that will tie uh in with the second point which is plugins you know learning your software synthesizers learning learning your samplers your um your mixing plugins, stuff like EQ and compression, which even to this day are mysteries to a lot of people because we try to <laughs> complexify stuff that should remain simple. And then, like you've said, you know, learning new playing styles, um, you know, analyzing songs that you like, why you like them, what's the chord progression in there, and that that'll tie into the the next topic, which is music theory. And and on top of all that. Uh, you go back to your goal and maybe it was dubstep that uh, motivated you to become a great producer and you wanted to learn how to sound design, you know, growls and basses like Skrillex. So there's this aspect, the sound design, and then there's how to mix it to make it to make the whole song sounds like a Skrillex banger and then the mastering. So there's always going to be learning. And I, I think at the end of the day, this whole journey is learning, right? Yeah, exactly. I think it's important to not get overwhelmed. And like you said, um, since you're going to be doing it every day, you should like you should set like a precise timeline to like what you want to learn. Let's say on Mondays you're going to learn your DAW, so you're going to uh, pick a, a tutorial on YouTube, and you're going to grab the manual, and you're going to be learning. Um, specific shortcuts or the the specific plugins that come with your DAW, or how to use them. You like you said, how to MIDI edit. On another day, it could be mixing plugins, um, like uh, 
what type of EQ you have, uh, how you can use them, compression, uh, everything that makes you sound like gel together. On another day, it could be more of uh, like uh, VST plugins. So learning what type of synth you want to use, you're learning how to um, how to use your presets, like the presets. That's another thing that we we we've been wanting to talk about. Um, it's it. There's nothing wrong with using presets, so you're gonna have to learn how to use them, and then at some point to customize them uh, for yourself and to make your own. Um, so there's plenty of uh, of ways, but like I said, make t- make specific time every day for a specific thing that you want to learn, and that's gonna get you going. And then every week you're gonna learn something new, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a way to also not get bored with your journey because if you're doing this every day at some point it can get like a bit monotonous and always doing the same thing the same beats and it's a it's a way to if you keep evolving and you keep getting better and you keep developing new skills then you're always going to be excited with what you're making and you're going to feel a flow that pushes you forward and that that's going to keep the the fire going so once you've learned a bunch of things. I think that's uh, point number five. It's op- it's important to be open to practice because I see a lot of beginners and they r- want to cut to the chase and get to, you know, getting their, be- their beats on a beat store and selling. But I think that before, you know, jumping the gun and, and thinking that you can become a professional, you need to, to, to just make beats for the sake of making beats and uh, spending these hours. And we're, we're both big fans of, uh, you know, the war of art. Um, you will need to put in these 10,000 hours, you know, uh, in order to really find your sound, find your groove, uh, develop a workflow. Um, and, and as you've said, you know, starting from presets and going into sound design and going to really, you know, create creative sound design, recording stuff, but starting from a simple point where you master the basic elements and then you can start to explore different ways of producing music on a computer. Um, well, like we said, there's nothing wrong with starting with presets and it's a good way to, like you said, to get that practice in. Uh, you you set a goal to, to to make a certain type of song you find a preset that uh, that matches the, the the first sound that that you you want to introduce in the, in that song and you go from there you write from that i think the the idea with the whole practice thing is first of all to to understand your tools uh, know your presets and like and slowly start to compose and the funny thing is with composing is that the what you must not do is to get caught up in sound design at the same time that you're composing. Because composing is very, it's something that comes to you in like little blocks. You're never going to be composing for eight hours straight. I think your, your brain is not made like that and you can't be inspired for eight hours straight so when inspiration kicks in you have to be able to lay down those ideas pretty fast so i think that's the the whole point of of having or having presets and to be able to save sounds is that to get your ideas your inspiration as far ahead as possible before that inspiration falls off and then you can come back and do sound design and modify things and everything so that's that's the way I look at things. So it kind of uh, mirrors what we've just talked about in point number four, which was l- the learning aspect. The practice aspect also needs to be compartmentalized. So, for example, on Mondays you will work on your drum programming. Uh, you know, on, on on Tuesdays you will work on putting together chord progressions. On uh, Wednesdays you will start to add or explore different types of melodies for the chord progressions and and rhythms you came uh, came up with and so on and so forth and like bk said um dividing the composition aspect from the production and sound design aspect is crucial because if you try to master a bunch of different thing, things at once you know finding a good melody then finding the right sound or creating the right sound and then uh, understanding what kind of plugins you can use to mix that sound and, and get it even closer to what you kind of hear in your head. 
Um, and then putting this all together and creating an arrangement of just not maybe a four or eight bar loop, but, you know, maybe two minutes of good music, solid music around these ideas. So, again, this can be very challenging. And the idea is to be aware of all of these moving parts and tackling one at a time. Well said. So shall we move on to point number six? Yes, sir. So point number six is, uh, and you've prob- we've hinted at it, but it's the manipulation stage of things. So what do we mean by manipulating? Well, like we were talking about, um, since we're separating each phases of the, the whole production process, once you've composed something that you're happy with, with uh, your presets, uh, your basic presets that you've established in the first part, um, now you can go back because this is a step that's done. Now you can go back and you can start to tweak things. Now you're going to be searching for that special thing, that special organic sound that you wanted. Now you're going to be exploring all the different synth that you have in your library. Um, that's why it's important to, 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 to find the time at that moment to like experiment and to, to start tweaking your presets and to start saving them. Like if you've tweaked something for like an hour, save it. It could become like part of your, your personal library and you start building your custom libraries of, of a plugin slash presets that you like to use. That way, it's something that you can reuse in, in the future and you don't have to work quite so hard. And at the same time, as you move forward, that's, that, that custom settings development, it's becoming, it's going to be becoming part of your musical style. It's going to be kind of your brand. Um, just like Martin Garrix has this, this specific synth sound, just like a, a Tiesto has this specific kick. Well, your presets that you've saved, that that you've tweaked, or there's those drums that you've worked on, they're gonna be they're gonna become part of your sound. And also, it's uh, it makes your workflow faster, so that you can make the most of uh, the inspiration that you, that you get in the future. Well said. I couldn't have put it better. I mean, just to reiterate. There are two aspects in the the manipulate phase, speeding up the workflow by creating a bunch of different ideas and and kind of ways of working with your plugins through presets uh, so that when inspiration strikes, and as you've said, it does not always strike, so you need to be ready. And uh, also, like you said, talking about the brand, that's where you can really develop your sound, but don't be in a rush to develop this sound first you know master the basics learn how to write proper good music and then once that's uh, achieved then it becomes very easy to just focus on uh, what i would call the creative mixing aspect where you don't just control the frequencies but you you use um, you know plugins such as delays reverbs distortions to really go further and dig into the into those musical ideas that you've laid laid down, and then make it th- your own. So let's wrap this up. This framework of seven steps with number seven, experiment. And um, it could be a bit redundant, but I think there's even more because now we can even get out of the computer with this uh, step, right, BK? Uh, exactly. Um, like we mentioned before, uh, once your creation is kind of done, uh, you're going to start tweaking your presets, finding those specific sounds. And now at this part, it's it's even even further along the process. So we want to start to experiment. So at this point, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, and you you can take the time and make the time for pure sound design. And you can start to create even presets from scratch. And that's that's the whole point, I think, of sound design. And it's to be able to have like your own custom sound. And it's the fun of it, of the, the, the whole music part, to be able to create, let's say, a, a sampler instrument or a specific sound that you've recorded. Um, let's say you've recorded something outside with a small recorder. And you want to turn it into a sample. Let's say you've recorded uh, a drum sound at a drum shop downtown. That's a perfect way to to build your 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 drum library. So 
in this part, I think don't be afraid to try stuff out. I think uh, a small a small recorder is pretty cheap. You can get one uh, for like a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. You can have something that's a pretty good quality. And even if you don't have the money for that, since you probably have a phone, you can already start recording stuff with your phone. So I think the phone is the perfect way to start uh, introducing fully from the outside in your in your creation, be it. Uh, downtown people talking sounds uh, be it at a, a concert uh, be it at a recital be it a, in a restaurant or anything so don't be afraid to experiment and uh, to create sounds from your own sound sources uh, to create presets from scratch uh, using tutorial once again back to learning um, and also the sky's the limit you can start reamping the sound that you already have you can um re-record the sound that's in your computer go through a let's say you have a friend guitar player who has a, a distortion pedal well you can maybe try putting those drums into the distortion pedal and see what what uh what gives what with a good sound it can give so i think the sky's the limit with this tech with these uh experiment and for me it's one of the the most fun aspect because like we said before create like creativity doesn't always hit but sound design, you can do that pretty much all day because anything can become a sound. Like your kitchen can become a a place where you found, find new sound. The outside world is the same thing. Just to complete what you've just said, I think there are two other aspects uh, that are quite magical about uh, sounds in the real world because obviously we, we will never uh, go back to not using a computer to produce our music. The computer is a wonderful, wonderful tool. But for example, we had this discussion, I don't know if you remember, about acoustics and how certain rooms will give certain sounds uh, kind of a soul, you know? And the only way to capture that soul is through, you know, like you said, using your, your smartphone or a little digital recorder and then uh, getting that uh, kind of 3D sound into your DAW and, and breathing more life into your compositions. And the other aspect for me is uh, also the, the ability to, um, you know, use your body and your, 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 your sense of rhythm. For example, if you play a little percussion, a great example of that is Timbaland. He was known for using, you know, pencils on a little uh, metal cup, for example, just to create this little loop that would go on top of programmed drums, but it would breathe this little, this humanness and this uh, real life sound to his drums uh, and, and this organicness, uh, I might even add. So, at the point number seven, experimenting is all about, you know, going in and out of the computer to, to really uh, give more textures to your beats and uh, more, uh, like I said, uh, a kind of a sense of three di third di dimension because, yes, reverbs and all of that are great now, but there's something more to the, the real world being captured through a, a microphone. Yeah, exactly. So let me just reiterate for our audience real quick the seven steps to the Bedroom Super Producer um, framework. Number one, we have to find your why because the music journey is so demanding, you will need to have a strong reason to, uh, to dive and, and into this world and open Pandora's box, as you said, and really see all the... the the, the information overload that it can create. So you need to be driven and passionate about it. Really, really passionate, I mean. Number two is determining goals because it's one thing to know that you want to have music in your life, but it's a, it's a, it's a completely different animal where uh, we try to do it over 10, 15, 20, 30 years like ourselves. And so... Um, having a goal or a set of goals or ever-changing and evolving goals is very important to keep your focus uh, going somewhere. <laughs> and then at number three, three, we have, you know, getting obviously a basic setup, you know, especially the computer, the DAW, some plugins. And then number four, we have the learning of these tools. Number five is the practicing 
uh, of using the tools, incorporating that with music theory or even music playing if you know an instrument. And understanding that it's not always about creating a, uh, like a finished, polished product. You will have to go through different phases where you, you just try to make little tiny mock-ups and kind of keep it moving so you don't get, like you said earlier, discouraged. Because it's very easy to get discouraged, but the idea is to always do a little something to keep moving. And then at number six, this is where we get really creative with the manipulation phase. Once you you understand how to put little beats together, you know, drum beats, chords, melodies, then you can really start tweaking, as you've said, uh, the sounds with your plugins and your synthesizers and your sampler presets and all of that good stuff. And finally, the experimentation phase where we... Uh, we refine our sound design practices, but also we use the real world uh, to get in and out of the computer to really get the most um, rich sounding music together. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's our framework for today. Obviously, this is a lot to chew on. As we've said, uh, we have other podcasts that will focus on more specific aspects of this framework. We have an, a, an episode right now on how to buy the proper computer for your uh, music goals. Uh, we also have a video on the YouTube channel uh, titled How to Climb the, Mu the Mountain of Music Production, which uh, in which I uh, teach you guys and, and gals, obviously, uh, how to approach composition in a world of presets where sometimes people will say, well, presets are cheating. And we say, no, no, no. Presets are just a tool like the computer, like a guitar, like a, anything. Uh, and it's a way to get where you want to go and learn from the best in the world. And um, so I, I invite you to watch this video. And now I'll uh, turn back to BK for our uh, closing argument. Well, well said. Um, we're going to wish you a great week. Um, keep making that uh, great music. Don't be afraid to keep at it. Uh, like we said, we need to practice. Um, don't forget to keep learning. And what we're doing right now is uh, learning. There's no failing uh, in music. You can only get ahead and uh, learn new things and get better at your craft. On this point, I'll say we'll see you guys next week. We will indeed see you guys next week. Peace out. Peace out. Thanks for listening to the podcast, guys. Remember to subscribe if you like what you hear. We're on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Also, if you want to support us, head on to delicatebeast.com. You can find our serum packs, our contact instruments, and also plenty of freebies if you subscribe to the newsletter. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook. And once again, keep making that awesome music.